Hi, John LaRue here at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, and it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to work here at this institution that has such wonderful artistic treasures that we can share not only with New Brunswick but with the world. And it's one of the greatest examples of philanthropy in the history of New Brunswick that a New Brunswick native son, Lord Beaverbrook, wanted to give back to his province. And he knew that in giving an art gallery and a collection of art, he could essentially in perpetuity constantly give back and inspire people and enrich this place and he's done that and we've been lucky for 60 years to be able to to have that consideration here at the art gallery but what Beaverbrook has also done is give a whole lineage of of wonderful gifts to the world through buildings that are here in Fredericton places like the Playhouse which is formerly actually called the Beaverbrook Auditorium that's his legal name and you can see that through the big B which is on the lyre in front of uh, the side entrance of the building Beaverbrook was also very conscious of giving back to New Brunswick through the University of New Brunswick it was an institution that was very close to his heart he was chancellor for decades and when you go on campus his name it seems to be everywhere, but in important places. He gave a number of buildings, such as the Beaverbrook Rink, the Lady Beaverbrook Gymnasium, the Lady Beaverbrook Residence. But really key to his philanthropy and where all of this wave of generosity started was a hundred years ago this year, in 1920, when Lord Beaverbrook started the Beaverbrook Scholarships. And there are hundreds of Beaverbrook scholars around the world that owe so much of their professional and personal lives to the generosity of this person because that was really the beginning of his New Brunswick philanthropic exercise and this was one of his last and they're very much connected it was about engaging young people inspiring them opening their minds and we really want to celebrate that this year so by celebrating the Beaverbrook we can also celebrate a wonderful gift of a hundred years of Beaverbrook scholars at University of New Brunswick so the story goes back a hundred years, back when Beaverbrook was obviously a much younger man, and it is said that UNB grad Murray McLaren, who was an MP and later Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick, he visited Lord Beaverbrook in England, and that discussion inspired his interest in helping support the university. And whatever the catalyst, the establishment of the Lord Beaverbrook Scholarships in 1920, they marked the beginning of Beaverbrook's philanthropy to his home province, and that's a huge event. Uh, and this led to so many generous gifts to New Brunswick and to UNB over the rest of his life. And those have continued affecting our lives today. So to date, over a thousand Beaverbrook scholarships have been awarded with a focus on entrance scholarships for New Brunswick high school grads and law school scholarships as well. And my dad was actually interviewed for one back in 1959. Uh, he didn't get it, but he did live in the Lady Beaverbrook residence and he had a great experience at UNB in the forestry department. So Beaverbrook took a great personal interest in his scholars and he met with them whenever he could during his annual fall visits to Fredericton and he would host the overseas scholars on his Churchley estate when they were visiting in England and they all say that was a very memorable event. Now inspired by their benefactor in 1979 a group of former Beaverbrook scholars decided to maintain that legacy by establishing an undergrad scholarship of their own they called the Beaverbrook Scholars Award. And since that time, they've contributed, get this, more than $2.5 million to the scholarship endowment. And that makes it one of the single most uh, successful alumni fundraising programs ever at UNB. And uh, that scholarship has also been supported by the Beaverbrook Canadian Foundation. And they've been a major donor. And of course, they've helped the Beaverbrook Art Gallery uh, over many decades. And a couple of notable Beaverbrook scholars have been Richard J. Curry, who's Chancellor Emeritus at UNB and a great benefactor to UNB in the Beaverbrook and uh, he's a member of our Board of Governors uh, and also former Premier Frank McKenna. So, uh, you know, <laughs> pretty good lineage there. So how does all of this manifest itself in the Beaverbrook Art Gallery? And how does this coalesce with the history of UNB? Well, it's amazing because they're absolutely intertwined, the two institutions. And if you go back to our original collection, which so many people know, you know, the British, the Canadian works, there's masterworks that Beaverbrook decided to give to the people of New Brunswick. It actually goes back to the first time they were displayed, and that was actually at UNB in the 1950s. And they were displayed here in a building a lot of people know today as the Provincial Archives of New Brunswick. It's on the UNB campus, and it's the former Bonner Law Bennett Library at UNB. Uh, it was university's library for many decades and the very first iteration of this building was actually only half of the wings it was here's an original picture of it you can see the central part with the porch and then the downhill part which was a large reading room 
So Beaverbrook actually gave the other half, which is there today, which is now the reading room in the archives, but that was the, the large hall where Beaverbrook's collection of art was first shown back in 1954. So the Beaverbrook collection, the first chance the public really got to see it, was over 66 years ago. With Lord Beaverbrook's connections at UNB, it was not a problem for him to organize this exhibition, and it took the province by storm. In 1954, Beaverbrook organized an exhibition from his collection, uh, but also some works from his good friend Sir James Dunn's collection as well. And, and Dunn, you know, of course, the two are very well-known New Brunswick industrialists, and their works form the core of our original collection. Dunn was a great art collector as well, and in fact, we owe him the interest in Dali that we have. So I want to quote from an article from the Daily Gleaner of November 9th, 1954, which was printed just after the opening of the exhibition, and I quote, more than 500 people visited the exhibition during the first hour alone in the new wing of the Bonner Law Bennett Library, draped like a bona fide art gallery, was so jammed that it was impossible for the patrons, students, faculty, citizens, and visitors to take in all of the portraits." End of quote. So by the time it was over two weeks later, more than 5,000 people from all across Atlanta, Canada, and Maine had viewed the exhibition. It works by Canadian and British artists, people like Augustus John, Stanley Spencer, Walter Sickert, John Singer Sargent, Thomas Gainsborough, and Canadian artists like Jack Humphrey and Cornelius Kriegoff. And the exhibition famously featured some of Graham Sutherland's preliminary sketches for that, that well-known and infamous portrait of Winston Churchill that was destroyed. And, and many of you may know that episode from a, a recent uh, feature on the miniseries The Crown. One of the most popular paintings that was shown was neither Canadian nor British, it was actually Spanish and it's ubiquitous to the Beaver Gallery now, but at the time, think of how amazed people would have been to see a work by Salvador Dali at the UNB Library. And it was a fresh painting that was only completed just a few months before and it was of Lady Dunn and it was called Equestrian Fantasy where she's sitting atop a horse with a falcon in her hand with her uh, now <laughs> surrealist three legs um, on the horse and it was it was just a triumph of painting the likes that people had never seen before and Lord Beaverbrook and Sir James Dunn didn't attend the opening ceremonies um, which was overseen by Lieutenant Governor McLaren but they did attend a preview two days before the opening and one of the things that's interesting uh, maybe for me at least is the advisor that really helped uh, with Lord Beaverbrook choosing a lot of this collection was a South African working in Britain at the time named LaRue Smith LaRue. No relation. By 1959, the actual art gallery itself opened on the banks of the St. John River, the beautiful modern building with an outside of marble and grey brick. And on the inside, housing of course the collection, which a lot of it was seen at UNB five years before. But in addition, there were also works by Salvador Dali, like the magnificent Santiago Al Grande, which was donated by Sir James Dunn's widow, who was later to become Lady Beaverbrook as well. Lord Beaverbrook's philanthropy absolutely transformed the province of New Brunswick, but more specifically, UNB would be a very different institution today had he not been involved so deeply with them, and the Beaverbrook Art Gallery wouldn't even exist. And so our lives are absolutely intertwined and we can thank his generosity for improving the lives of so many New Brunswickers, but also not only through his institutions, but through aspects like the Beerbrook Scholarships, which celebrate this wonderful 100th anniversary this year. So in the words of the Latin motto, which were held aloft by the two beavers on the UNB flag, Sapo Day, dare to be wise. <laughs>